In Camtasia Studio, having a solid understanding of how the timeline works is essential to editing your screencasts. Even if you've used Camtasia Studio 7 or prior, a lot has changed to give you more flexibility and power. This tutorial will cover the biggest concepts and tasks you'll need to be successful, as well as a few tips to make working on the timeline much easier. Digital videos, just like old-style film-based movies, are based on a series of images that play so fast our eyes see motion instead. In Camtasia Studio, what you see in the canvas is the frame, or picture, at the point in the timeline where the playhead is. The timeline, on the other hand, shows you how long things like video, audio, images, and callouts will show up in your video. Before something exists on the timeline, it doesn't show up in your video. And after it ends in the timeline, it also doesn't show up. One of the great things about the new timeline is that you can use unlimited tracks and that there are no media-specific tracks. That means that you can put your video, audio, callouts, and images on any track you want. An important note though, what media you place on the track does matter, a lot. That's because while the timeline shows when your media appears in the video, it also shows the order in which the media is stacked on top of each other in the video. You can think of it as almost a sidewise view of the media, while the canvas is a front side view of the stacked content. So, because the timeline shows the stacking order, this is sometimes called the Z order, placing any media on a higher track on the timeline will move it higher in the stacking order. And thus, moving media up in the timeline will move it forward on the canvas. And moving it down in the timeline will move it backward on the canvas. You may notice that some of your recordings have both video and audio in the same clip on the timeline. This is to keep them in sync and make them easier to work with. However, if you need to edit either separately, just right click on the clip in the timeline and choose separate video and audio from the menu. I want to keep them together, so I'll just undo that action with the Control Z hotkey. Also on the timeline, you'll notice that some of the clips may have this line and triangle at the bottom. This is where Camtasia Studio stores animation keyframes. One mini track is for visual animations, including zooms, and one is for cursor animations. As with the clips on the timeline, you can drag the animations and resize them. Notice how the left drag handle only appears when you mouse over it. Next, let's make a selection on the timeline to cut or delete. Simply put the playhead where you want the selection to start and drag the red out point to the right. You can always adjust your selection with the green and red handles. Since you've just selected that section of all tracks on the timeline, if you want to delete only one or some of the tracks, just click the locks on the left of the tracks you want left alone. Be sure to scroll up and down to make sure you don't miss any, and unlock the tracks before trying to edit them again. From here, you can cut, which will remove the sections from the timeline, and shift the media that was to the right in to fill the gaps. Or, you can copy the selection. If you're done with the selection, you can clear it by double-clicking on the playhead. You can now paste what you've cut or copied, and the clips will be added to the timeline above what you already have. You can also just split all of the unlocked clips right at the playhead by clicking this button. Splitting allows you to move parts of clips or delete large sections. But since splits and cuts can interfere with animations, you may want to do them after adding any zooms or other keyframes. Finally, here are a few tips to help you work on the timeline much easier. At times, there may be a lot on your timeline, both horizontally and vertically. You can use the scroll bars, but it's nice every now and then to be able to see everything. To show more, you can make the track shorter 
by moving this slider to the left. And to zoom in horizontally on the timeline, drag this slider to the left. Also, many of the most common actions are available in the context menus, shown by right-clicking on the very left of the tracks, clips on the timeline, empty areas of the timeline, and on the playhead.